This episode is brought to you by the all-new NAD M10 V2, featuring a size-defying and conservatively rated 100 watts per channel of amplification. The M10 V2 sets a new standard in audio. have an idealized sound in your head like can you imagine an ideal sound for you I can but it actually relates to vintage speakers and that sound is very dynamic a little bit warm up top and a fairly good amount of low-end swing it's this sort of like, like almost like a pendulous bass and that's what lives in my head I know it's a bit strange if we look at the Klipsch Forte 4 loudspeakers behind me, they definitely look like a vintage speaker, don't they? Now the Forte series was first introduced by Klipsch in the 80s, but then due to sort of, I guess, demand changes or people wanting smaller speakers during the 90s, it was discontinued. But then about four years ago, it was revived for the Forte 3. And we covered that in 2019. So today's video is about the Forte 4, which I think came out at the start of this year. So we're just doing a bit of an update. But if you haven't watched my Forte 3 video, please do so before going any further with this one. And no, I'm not gonna put the Forte 4 on wheels this time. I prefer to listen to these with the grills on, but if we take the grills off, we can see some of the changes that Klipsch have made in going from the Forte 3 to the Forte 4. So the tweeter here is still a K100 Ti. It's a titanium tweeter, and it is coupled to a Klipsch horn mounting, and apparently the update is actually to the phase plug on that driver. However, the biggest change here relates to the mid-range driver, which is also in a Klipsch horn, a Tractrix horn. Now this driver was apparently first developed for the Cornwall 4. In the Forte 3, it was made of titanium. In this new driver, it's made of polymide. Don't ask me what polymide is, I don't know. If you know what polymide is and why it might matter to a, a loudspeaker driver, let us know in the comment section below because we can all learn. The bass driver. It's still the same, I think, as the Forte 3. So it's a 12 inch composite fiber driver, but it works in tandem with a driver on the back of the speaker because it's not ported. There's a passive radiator driver there and that's 15 inch. So those two work together to produce the lower frequencies in the Forte 4. Updates that we can't see, apparently Klipsch seriously overhauled the crossover in going from the three to the four, and this version are rated down to 38 hertz by the manufacturer. The nominal impedance here is eight ohms, and the efficiency is 99 dB. Now, those of you who saw my sort of best products of 2021 video will know that the Zoo Soul 6 also have an efficiency of 99 dB. So that sets up a nice sort of comparison situation. Both of these speakers sell for roughly sort of five, 6,000 euros per pair. So they're price comparative. And yeah, I think that this, 
The zoos help us understand better the sound of the klipsch, I hope. Now, like the zoo, the klipsch is another big sounding speaker. So that means the soundstage goes like crazy wide, crazy tall, depth, not so much. I would also say that image specificity from the klipsch comes up just a shade short on the zoos, as does mid-range transparency and pop. I'd say that the zoos sort of like leap at you, the klipsch are a little bit more sort of standoffish. A slightly bigger difference with the klipsch is that their mid bass is a bit richer than the zoos. But more than that, the klipsch give us a sort of more low end heft and push, in, you know, right in the bottom. They sound like a weightier speaker than do the Soul 6. And that means that the klipsch will likely play better in larger rooms than the zoo. And also the klipsch, I really don't think they need a sub. You can add one, of course you can. but. I'm much happier listening to the Klipsch without a sub than I am the Zoo. And that means the Forte 4 have a fleshier sound than the Zoo. The Zoo are a little bit leaner and the Forte 4 therefore are richer in their tonality than the Zoo. So that might appeal to some people. However, the Zoo's speed is un unmatched. They're such a fast sounding speaker. To that end, I would say that the Forte 4 aren't quite as sort of snappy and lickety split as the Soul 6 when it comes to dynamics. But dynamics here with both speakers are exceptionally strong. And that's the message here for both these speakers. They're both really sort of part of a family of very, very dynamic sounding loudspeakers. Now, I would say that the Zoo are probably the most dynamic. I would say that the, the Klipsch Forte 4 are probably closer to more sort of traditional hi-fi speakers, you know, like, I don't know, Wilson's or Vivid Audio that I've got in my little storage area back there. So if you want something that sort of straddles the middle ground between a sort of traditional sort of hi-fi speaker and a Zoo speaker, the, the clip sort of seem to sit in the middle there. But what dynamics means for the listener are two things is the way I see it. First of all, it's a much, much, much more exciting listen. But it's also more satisfying at lower listening levels, especially these Forte 4. Now you might be asking, well, John, how do the Forte 4 compare to the Forte 3? I no longer have the Forte 3, so I can't really tell you. And audio memory is far too fragile for such potentially small deltas. How does the Forte 4 compare to another speaker you're thinking of? I don't know, because I don't have that loudspeaker. I'm just using the Zoos here as a contrast to better explain how I think the Forte 4 sound. Because talking about sound in absolutes, as in they have a big strong bass, like what is a big strong bass? They're very strong with dynamics, but what, what is that? You know, what does that mean? But what's really interesting about the Forte 4 is that they are the closest I have heard to date to that sound that lives in my head relating to vintage speakers. You know, they, they kind of have that nice heavy push into the room, they're dynamic, and ever so slightly warm up top, especially with the grills on. If you want a bit more zip, you take the grills off, but I prefer them with the grills on here. But it's amazing, you know, how, you know, I've been reviewing speakers for like 11 years now, and I finally come across a speaker, which is new production, I must admit, that, yeah, plays to this sort of idealized vintage sound that lives inside my head. And if you've got an idealized sound that lives inside your head and it doesn't have to relate to vintage speakers, then please let us know what that is to the best of your ability in the comments below. Anyway, as a famous dude once said, that's all I have to say about that. 
If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you like my attitude towards hi-fi and high-end audio, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.